Well, it's been a while, guys, but it's finally time to continue work on this epic water cool build in the Singularity Computer Spectre 2.0 case. We've got an X570 godlike motherboard from MSI, as well as two RTX 2080 Ti Seahawk pre-water blocked cards. I spent a decent amount of time on this build towards the end of 2019, and it's finally time to get it assembled, put back together. And for today's video, I have hopefully a secret weapon. It's a mini chop saw. Excellent. Corsair's new A500 dual fan CPU cooler features quad direct contact copper heat pipes, an intuitive slide and lock fan mount system that allows for variable height for DRAM clearance, and will run cool and quiet with the two included ML120 fans. Installation is painless thanks to the hold fast retention system which supports all modern desktop sockets, and it comes with Corsair's high performance XTM50 thermal paste pre-applied. Click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. So if I've learned anything from my recent water cooling videos, it's that I should not start the video off by saying, here's what we're gonna do today, and here's what we're gonna get through. I have some goals in mind, of course, but uh, I'm not planning too far ahead because things might not go smoothly. And yes, I'm referring to my recent Riptide videos. If you've missed those, uh, things didn't go smoothly. It's back up and running. I'm still gonna do more projects on that. But why has this project been delayed? First off, it's been my fault, but uh, I was waiting on a few things that had to be special ordered. Of course, we have custom sleeved cables by Insourced Customs. We've already installed uh, the 24 pin. That was handled in the last video on this. We have uh, little shorty extension cables, as well as extensions for all of the power cables needed for these GPUs. And of course the supplemental CPU power at the top. So those have arrived. The CPU I've been intending to use pretty much this entire time has been the 3950X from AMD. And uh, it's a 16 core, but also very difficult to find, especially at retail. Fortunately, I was able to order one of those just before CES. So that arrived and uh, haven't unboxed it yet, but it should be good to go. And then for the water cooling loop itself, we have this front distribution plate for the Spectre 2.0, uh, which looks really pretty up there at the front. But after getting the radiators installed, I realized that was gonna be kind of difficult to get to without some specialized fittings. To solve that dilemma, I hit up Corsair and they have provided a bunch of fittings from their new Hydro X line. So we have uh, both the hardline fittings there that I'm gonna be using for the fittings themselves with their acrylic tubing. And then we have a bunch of 45 degree and 90 degree angled adapters, which should hopefully help me get up and around to get to the distro plate and back. That means that I think we have all of the parts needed to get this put together. We got the motherboard, we got the memory. Actually, I now have the Trident Z Neo memory that they have sent over as well. The GPUs, the power supply, the fans and rads, the case itself, of course, SSDs already installed. I've got an EK Supremacy Evo block for our CPU. And with all of that said, let's get this thing put together. One of the potential conflicts that I had come across that I had kind of forgotten about was uh, with this part of the rear distro plate back plate thing, which is it needs a little input in here to go over to get up to the front radiator. And there's very little clearance between this fitting coming out and the radiator with the fan on top of it. Uh, so much to the point where I wasn't sure if it was gonna be able to fit at all. Fortunately, I used just a little extension fitting on this outlet right there. And uh, I, had to, I had to get lucky here because it had to tighten down right at the point where it would be also angled in the right direction, which is that way. And that's tight, so that's good. That should give us enough clearance still to fit the fans in red on top of it. Apart from potential clearance issues with some of the fittings, which I think we've worked around, I've gotta make sure that my custom sleeve cables are in the right orientation and everything. Fortunately, because of the way I chose the patterns on here, I can just tell by looking at them and what patterns are what, uh, which the CPU ones are. And these are done properly with the clasps on the right side, so when they both plug in, to the motherboard there, they should have the pattern, which I'm going for kind of black on the outsides with some gray and then that polar pattern in the middle. And as I'm going ahead to reinstall the motherboard and then I need to do the radiator and fans on top of that, I wanna make sure anything plugged in along this top line is already plugged in. So I've got several fan headers here. I have three top fans and three front fans. I think I'm gonna wire the three top fans up to these and then the front fans, I'm gonna wire up to some of the bottom headers on the board. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me here for this auspicious, uh, auspicious occasion. Never been done before. Uh, we have the drill master here from Harbor Freights, little two inch buzz saw. Not the best reviews on this unit, to be very perfectly honest. Uh, it seems to wear out pretty quickly if you're using it for wood or metal, for example. But uh, for plastic, for acrylic, maybe it will work perfect. Maybe this will set a new standard for the future of hardline water cooling. Thank you for joining me to celebrate history. Ooh. blade is apparently not quite long enough to go all the way through the yeah, tube. But still, cut. still cut it pretty clean though. It's a lot faster than the stupid saw and it held it a lot straighter. So it's now day two and if I'm being honest I was hoping to get this completed on day one. Of course it's a custom water cool build. Lots of little things can go wrong. Little details to figure out. So I stayed up kind of late last night and I did some extra work on this that wasn't filmed because today we have another project we're supposed to get to after we hopefully finish this off. Last night we got as far as installing one of the uh, actual acrylic tubing segments back here to connect the top radiator to the rear distro plate panel. And then late last night I did some work on quite a few things because with do when doing a build like this, you just kind of need some time to sit and stare at it and kind of figure out what's gonna go where once you've put things roughly where they're supposed to be. So the first thing I did was get the graphics cards reinstalled so I could try to figure out just how this loop is gonna work. And what I've decided on is a parallel setup where the uh, outlet from the rear distro plate is kind of come out here and go over to this inlet on the GPUs. I've already tested the plexi on the front and there is enough clearance to go in right there with this 90 degree bend. That's gonna shoot straight back parallel into both GPUs at the same time and then I did something that I haven't seen before with a water-cooled build so uh, first on this one let's be honest it probably has been done but uh, I just haven't seen it personally so I used a three-way splitter here in between both of the cards as a return and that's gonna bring the flow from both cards back to a central point that's gonna go up and into the CPU block on the inlet right here out from the CPU block and up to the top radiator. We already connected up this bend back here going to the back distro plate. And this was actually the most difficult little thing to figure out because I had to use multiple little connectors, fittings and everything to get it spaced out just perfect to bring it around the cabling that's right there and still leave enough room that we could fit a tube in there and get hands in there to tighten down the caps on the fittings. I also wanna point out that this set of fittings is not actually touching this side brace bar right there. There is a little bit of clearance there, so no faux pas in that area. And then for any of you guys who are looking at this little uh, cutoff saw we're using, again, it came from Harbor Freight. This was $35 at Harbor Freight plus tax. And I think that set of fittings probably costs more than the cutoff saw itself. Once I determined where the graphics cards are gonna be, I was able to a little bit more comfortably start plugging in the cabling for those. Again, these Ensourced Customs cables are just beautiful. And with all these 3D printed cable guides on there, it makes it, I wouldn't say easy to train the cables, but much, much easier. I got the rear cables all connected, fed back, and then down through the channel in the back here for the cable management. And here where the graphics cards cabling is gonna come through, we actually need to do too deep. So there's gonna be four cables uh, shoved into each one of those little prong outlets. I managed to get all of the one cable routed back there and I think it's looking pretty good. And then I started on the outer cable here. I got the six pin plugged in and connected and wired up. It is a bit of a squeeze to get it pushed in there on top of the rear cards cables. But then I came across uh, a small error on the part of uh, Insource Customs. And, and to be fair, this is a really complex cabling job with uh, lots of moving parts and cables and colors that are supposed to go in specific locations. So I don't blame Joey one bit at all, but the center cable for the eight pin is just backwards. These two gray pieces are supposed to be on the right side here rather than on the left. Fortunately, I have the tools to fix this. So I'm gonna be doing that in just a second, swapping those cables over to the other side. Then I can finish off training those cables, get the third eight pin plugged in, fed back, and then down to the power supply. If I have any fears for today about what might go wrong, it's the fact that I'm gonna have a pretty good amount of power of cables that need to be just tucked right in this little narrow stretch of space right there. So I'm hoping that will all fit with everything plugged in and the little shorty connectors for the power supply. And then a final thing I worked on was this front radiator because we have to go uh, out from the distro plate into this one 
out from there and then up into the front distro plate and then out of that front distro plate and then back into the rear one. And I think I've got that figured out with just a few connectors up here on the top of the radiator to feed it directly up at an angle. I'm gonna have a short little tubing section going on right there. And then for the return, I've just got ang angled that way and then this one is angled that way. So I should just be able to do a 90 degree bend to connect those up. So if things go as planned today, we can just get down to work and start getting some of those tubing runs put in place, get some of those bends worked out. I'll of course need to quickly rewire this center PCIe cable, and then I need to worry about plugging in fans where they need to go and whether or not I can just use these extensions or whether I need to cut something down uh, depending on where cable management might be an issue. Because there's really not many places in this case at all where you can hide cables. And I think that brings you guys back up to speed, so let's get back to work. I think I have finally gotten the two connections done for this front distro plate, top radiator, and back into the side panel. Let me just quickly uh, install the last screw uh, that needs to go in here to hold this in place. I didn't even get it. Uh. Oh, praise God. Jesus. Thank you, Satan. Let me attempt to explain why my opinions of this case are rapidly shifting. And uh, a lot of this, to be honest, has to do with this front distro plate, which was sent over. So I was like, all right, distro plates are all the rage right now. This isn't even really a distro plate. It's just an aesthetic thing that channels your liquid out the front through a loop and then back into your loop. But this is mounted up here. So your only connection points for it are up there. And then if you're gonna have your radiators installed in this case, and the only place radiators are supposed to go, they're probably gonna be right up there. Bear in mind, this case is listed with a 60 millimeter uh, radiator clearance. These are actually 58 millimeters. Uh, so they're large, they're filling up the space according to the specs, but they should still be able to fit again according to the specs. This little joint up here allowed me to connect the top connection point there, and that wasn't too difficult since I managed to just get it to be a straight piece right there, and it was just a matter of getting that to be the right size. Getting this other piece here connected with just a simple, simple quote unquote 90 degree bend to come over here was the real, real pain in the butt. Part of that is because there's just no access from this side of the case. It's a solid piece of plexi. Part of that is because all these brackets that are holding on the top piece here and the side piece here are held on by these bolts, but the bolts need to screw through from either side. There's a bolt with a nut or vice versa. So if you wanted to remove anything, you're gonna need to be able to get back at the other side of it in order to remount it. Same thing goes for this front distro plate, which has actually in two separate pieces. There's this plastic bracket, there's the distro plate acrylic itself. Those are only held on by the screws. The screws can only be uh, screwed through to nuts in the back. And like, how do you even get at this one? If I didn't have those really, really thin needle, super needle nose pliers to hold that in place, I don't think I would have been able to even put this mounting screw back on. The good news, if I'm trying to look on the bright side, is that should hopefully be the most challenging part of the bends and getting the uh, water cooling loop set up. So uh, the rest of them should hopefully be fairly simple. 90 degrees over there, 90 degree out to here, and then the connections up here for the GPU. I'm also really, really nervous that when I do leak testing that some of those connections up there might leak just because it was so awkward to get back in there to tighten the caps on the fittings and everything. Uh, so fingers crossed there. That said, to provide some feedback on the case, because I feel like that should, if, if there's any sort of review element going into this video series on this build, it should be feedback on this case. 
Uh, I would not recommend that front distro plates and I would recommend getting smaller radiators or thinner radiators to give you more clearance and room to work with up in that top right corner. So like I said, kind of in the middle of this video, this is already day two on this particular phase of the build and my intent at the beginning was to take it one day at a time, make one video out of one day's work and when it goes longer like this, it cuts into my time to work on other projects, to work on projects I have here at home. Basically the situations I've encountered with this case that have forced me to take a lot more time to work around them are costing me money and that kind of sucks. So at this point, I need to cut this video off. I'm really sorry. I wanted to get further. I wanted to fill the loop. I think I can do that really soon. So that will be in the next video. I've also been talking with Thermaltake about getting some cool fluid to put in here. So uh, we'll be taking a look at that in the next video as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, for bearing with me as I struggle through some of these recent water cooling projects. And yes, all of this is so that you guys can be safe in your decisions to air cool your computers. Air cooling, it's way fucking simpler. I'm still holding out that this system will be epic when I finally get it all put together, but uh, that is all for this one. If you guys did enjoy it, learn something, or just uh, get a bit of schadenfreude or whatever you want to call it, hit the thumbs up button on your way out. I'll post links to relevant parts down in the video's description. And don't forget to check out my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and lots of other cool merch. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.